Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, man, I'm so excited. I'm so honored to have, have been doing this series, and I'm so excited and honored to be um, ending this series on this note. As you know, for the month of February, for Black History Month, we've been highlighting uh, designers and creators um, within the space, you know, making current history. We have people who have done the history in the past and things like that, and we make sure we uplift them and acknowledge them and acknowledge that work that continues to be done as we go on. But we also make sure that we shine light in our respective spaces on the people who are doing those things in those industries, the people who have set the pathway ahead of time and are still making those pathways, especially for people like me and others who look like me within the industry and continue doing that community work. So today, as we get ready to cap off the uh, series, I am I'm honored, I'm thrilled, I'm excited. One of my favorite creatives in general, um, and just like I said, somebody I just I look up to with their work and I watch every move and it does a lot for me. So today I'm honored to have Bima Williams. He's the freelance interviewer and marketing consultant. Bima Williams, welcome to Community Voices, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I really appreciate the the introduction. I'm I'm always humbled um, by the by the folks that I can impact. You know, I'm just a fellow creative myself trying to trying to share a little bit of game as 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 I progress myself. So um, I'm I'm honored to to be here. Honored to to share a little more of my story. And at the end of the day, I'm I'm hoping that I can help other creatives uh, along their path. Absolutely, and I, I think you know this 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 series is so important because you know I know community voice is also about giving back. But I think at the same time, a part of giving back is also showing people that you have a space, you belong in these places, you belong in these instances and things like that. So I think moments like this are important because people like you, people who have interviewed in the past like Yuri, people like that who showed me I belong. So I just love that I'm able to bring this series to life and you know, maybe impact others the way I've been impacted. So I appreciate you very much. Absolutely. So to get things kicked off, I want to make sure that, you know, we kind of backtrack a little bit into your career for those who may not be familiar with your past. We know about your independent work and the creative endeavors you do now, but I want to make sure we also tap into the things that have gotten you to that point. And I probably say this brand's name all the way wrong. I'm from Texas. <laughs> I, I have an accent, so forgive me. But when you first started early into this industry with Saucony, am I saying that right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> it took a lot of time to get that down. Um, <laughs> But you start off with Saucony, you were uh, the social, social went from social actually to I think the product line. And then you dove like head first uh, into Adidas, doing the easy side for two years. You were really had your feet moving in every aspect within the industry once you once you got your foot in the door. Um, I would love for you to just kind of take me back to that career jump though. That career jump from like, being social in the product line to then jump into Yeezy and, and working with Adidas there. Take me into that jump and kind of how it felt to really grow where you were... Um, just doing these different things and having that growth and kind of taking it all in. And then also just being cognizant of like the people that look like you were like where you're at in that environment. You know how, when you go up, things start to change. So just kind of being cognizant of that as you grow. Yeah, totally. Um, so there was a ton of things going on at that point when I was considering making that jump. And then I, I did make that jump to go over to, to Adidas to work on Yeezy. But one of the first things was like Saucony was like the best and biggest playground for me. It was where I, I, I learned so many of the things that I still um, leverage today from a marketing standpoint, but also a leadership standpoint. Um, and what was interesting about that experience was that um, the the brand is a performance running brand, but within it, there's a, a lifestyle arm to it, um, which was what formerly called Saucony Originals. Now it's called Saucony Lifestyle, but basically it's it's all the retro product, right? That would be performance models that were previously released. And so when I came in the door as a social media specialist, I didn't recognize Saucony had this, this lifestyle business. And then slowly but surely, I found myself spending more time over there. And then I, I started to get um, a, a role over there that was actually dedicated to it. And when I was um, on my way out, I was actually leading that global business of $50 million um, just at the age of 30. And so, and I'd only had like three years experience working within the organization. So it was just more so a testament of like, I actually knew a lot about, about the, the industry before I came in the door. But some of the challenges were that um, while I was there, I was the only black professional working in the headquarters. And that, that organization was owned by Wolverine is or, uh, owned by Wolverine worldwide. Mm -hmm. And um, it was in a bigger office that also um, uh, held brands like Sperry. They own, sorry, they own brands like Sperry. They own, um, uh, kids at the time, and they owned uh, Stride Right, which is a kids uh, kids business, mm -hmm. and they were all in this building. It's like 400 people, and it's just you know I'm the only black person there, and then the only brown person that I saw um, was was Pervy Patel, who you know would end up being one of my counterparts, and so 
what I was looking for was I was like, this is cool, but like I one, like I wanted to to be able to work on a bigger global business. Two, I needed some mentors that could really pour into me, and that wasn't really accessible at the time. And then um, the other part was like, I wanted to work with people that look like me, if I'm being honest, like I wanted a more diverse, you know, team and, and, and that, you know, no shade at the folks that I got to work with. These folks were brilliant. But I also was like, I know we can do more with more diverse perspective and more diverse backgrounds. And so the opportunity for um, Adidas and Yeezy had come up and just for some creatives, especially I know we all like go for opportunities and sometimes in our minds, we think opportunities should, you know, take shape in a, in a month or or the next day. My interview process for that role, it took like eight months. Like it, it, it took a eight lot, it took a lot of time <laughs> and like gap, gaps in communication. Like you didn't even know if it was still a thing. Um, there was, there was a lot of things that were going on, but um, ultimately um, that opportunity, what was so interesting when I was getting over there was that there were different middle management folks that were, were black and brown folks. And so initially going into it, I was like, yo, this is like, this is what I was looking for. And then also easy, as we all know, had, had global impact. And so um, those are some of the things that were on my mind when I was, I was making that transition. And of course that came with the move because Saucony was out in, in uh, Waltham, which is Boston, uh, Massachusetts. And uh, the role for Yeezy yeah. at Adidas is in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> yeah. You literally went from East coast to West coast. That's a big, a, a big jump. It's a big jump. <laughs> now I think too, I want to mention it's everything you talked about. You did so much in that span of time, which probably felt so fast within that three to four year period. Of course, then you go to Adidas. And then from Adidas, from, from Adidas Easy, you go to then Nike to do a, almost about a year stint, global, mm -hmm. I think global entertainment marketer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was, um, Nike at the time was restructuring that team. They were bringing in uh, folks from, from outside. And um, I was one of those folks that was tapped to come in. And so I was on the relationship side. Um, so basically between the, the talent such as like, a, a Travis Scott or a Supreme or a Stussy, um, and a, a Yoon ambush to the, the brand. And so my job was to make sure that the plan and the strategy that the brand had built was that it was actually being executed. And so, you know, I, there's a lot of different people that I had to, to interact with, but, you know, 18 year old me was like, this was, this was like the, the, the dream, you know, role, you know, you're around like so much of what's, um, people are excited about when it comes to, to, to sneakers, you know? So it was, it was crazy to even be in that position to have that opportunity. And, you know, I've been, of course, like personally, I've like watched your career for a long time and kind of studied and seen everything you do. I've, I've always wondered to myself too, which is what I want to ask in that, in that what almost seven eight year time period of you know starting with Saucony to then Nike to then you know uh, working independently and doing those things on your own freelance wise, have you ever took time to reflect on everything that you've done or all the work that you've done mm -hmm. or all everything that you've learned in that time period? Only only a bit of lately, if I'm being honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, and it, it's more of, um, you know, this year, my, or last year, sorry, my, my wife and I, um, we bought our, our first single family home Congrats. and, um, thank you so much. And so a year of that time has passed. And, and in that time, uh, we also took, uh, our first trip to, to Italy. It's a trip we wanted to take for at least over a decade now. Right. So like, it's been a long, very long term goal of ours. And on that trip, um, it was the first time I, I literally were sitting at the beach. I was on this beach chair and I had like a, I had like a glass of champagne and had like a cigar. And it was the first time where I was like, wow, like so much effort, so much work um, has, has happened in my life. And, and as creatives, um, we can be hard on ourselves. And I in particular can be hard on myself in, in just like, oh no, you got to do more, you know, like, you know, what about this thing? You know, and I can get a little bit caught up on, on what's next versus like really celebrating, you know, what, what the moment is literally, um, there's a video that I just did and it, um, it's, it's going to hit 350,000 views by the end of the day. And, you know, my wife, Caitlin was like, so how are you celebrating that? Cause my brain's already, I already put out the next video. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I've, I've already 
started to, to move on. Um, but I, I think we have to um, figure out, and maybe this is me speaking to myself right now in this moment, is figure out how to like be productive, but also um, give yourself the, the the pat on the back for the work that you put in because that work deserves to be to be celebrated and and most importantly, the the lives that are touched because of that 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 content in that video, right? To help other creatives like look at marketing different to see how that is a key factor in them separating themselves from, you know, competition in the market and them them elevating to then being able to attract the, the clients that they um they really want. And you know, that's a big mission of mine. Like is is to to do that. And so that would be um uh, that that'd be kind of like what I would say to like, you know, I'm still working on the process of um reflecting and celebrating the moments. And I feel that it takes some time because you like I say you, you get in that that mode, you have to constantly like pull yourself in out in it out of it and those kind of things and practice that gratitude and still knowing that like things have to be done. So it's definitely a hard balance. Yeah, it's a it's it's a hard balance, but we 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 got to do it because you know time we don't get the time back. You know what I mean? Like it's it's we don't get it back, and so you have to really be in the moment when you're in the moment. And one of the things I always say is be where your feet are. You know, you got to be playing it. <laughs> oh, be where your feet are. I got to get. I have to write that down. <laughs> my journal tonight. <laughs> now, I want to mention you know, talked about like you know touching people and the work that we do and how it impacts others. You know, community voices is also all about giving back. And, you know, we want to, we'd be remiss to not mention that we'll be giving back and make sure we're doing it on your behalf as well to continue our community efforts. Um, we'll be giving back to the charity of, uh, I messed this up earlier, so we're going to my, make sure my Texas accent don't slip out, but <laughs> Cairo, Portland. Yes, yes, got it right. yes. Cairo, Portland, we'll be donating to them to help continue their mission of eliminating the prolific racial achievement and opportunity gaps by cultivating confident, creative, compassionate leaders, something that I definitely hold tr truly in my heart all around as well. Um, I want, I would love for you to kind of speak to, you know, the, not just the importance of giving back, but actually, let me mention it this way. The one thing I've actually always admired about your approach to your work, the things that you do, how you speak with people, whether it's a DM, whether it's in person, um, I always have admired how you have one hand in front holding the door open for the next opportunity, but you always have a hand in the back holding the door open or anybody else who wants to come through. You're always kind of making sure that, yes, I'm going forward, but if you need to come forward, if you want to come forward, I make sure that the opportunity is there. Can you kind of speak to where that mindset has come from you to be like a foundational pillar in how you create? Yeah, truly. So, you know, I would say my my take as a creative is I'm very much uh, passionate about the entrepreneurial side of it, right? And I think all aspects are, are important, but just for me and my story and where I came from, like that part was the part that I just latched onto a ton. And one of the things that was critical and important to me today about that was that when I was coming up, I didn't have someone holding the door open. I didn't have someone telling me where the door was. I didn't have someone telling me what would happen when I got inside of the door or what would happen after I got inside of the door. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't have that, right, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. Regardless, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. And the mistakes are, are great because that's what informs and teaches you and allows you to get better. Like you learn through experience. And so I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. But the thing that I also realized was that I have a massive opportunity to help my peers, to help folks that have come before me and to help folks that will come after me have a much better experience and also to have in a, a creative industry and environment where it's, it's much more diverse. There's much more equity and equality that comes along with that. And so for me, that's why it's so important. The other thing is like, especially with my core group of friends, like I don't I like I don't want to be successful by myself. You know what I mean? Um, what's the what's the what's the fun in that? Right. Like I don't need to gatekeep information. Um, I can I can share that information because everybody's got to use it differently. Everyone um, has a different purpose and a different reason for for being here. And so I never really had the sense that what, what was meant for me would be stopped by me helping someone else, you know, come come through the door as well. I love that. I love that. Cause I think I said that winning together, taking the lessons together and being able to, to, to be, it's kind of like with this whole, you know, with, with the whole concept of how I, for black history month, it's like, you know, yes, we have mm. the things that we've done in the past and we admire those things. We acknowledge those things. We don't forget those things because about that. We wouldn't yeah. be here, but 
it doesn't stop with the past work. It's how are we doing the current work? How are we continuing the building? How are we continuing the making sure no one's left behind, making sure we don't, you know, we're making sure we're continuously elevating and taking those steps as time change. So I, I, I love that you even mentioned that. I think that it speaks to the whole design there. Yeah, yeah, to totally. That. I want to thank you for that because a lot, a lot of people have that mindset. It takes somebody who is very um, forward thinking outside of themselves. You know, I know there's all things that we want to do, but it takes a lot for a person to be able to step outside of themselves and figure out how can they help those around them, even when, you know, they're still trying to go for themselves and take care of themselves and the people um, around them. So I want to say I appreciate that. Totally. And it's something you definitely have to like, you know, you have to figure out the best way that, that you could do that. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm running around here like hammer. I ain't got 30 dancers. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what, the way I go about it is, is the information, right? Like that's the way that I could feasibly do it at this point in time. And then at some time, you know, there'll be like, you know, paid opportunities I'll have and there'll be community opportunities. You know, I've already worked with brands to distribute over $500,000 in grants to, to creatives and communities. And so like, it's definitely something that I'm constantly constantly thinking about like how can we do more how can we do a better job and and you know I am um, I I have to say I can't not say and mention you know one of my mentors um James you know Whitner and and so so much of the great community work that that he does um, I'm definitely inspired by him same absolutely he I learned so much about him during the pandemic yeah and you it was like the, the things he did around voting the way he takes his approach to art and storytelling and Storytelling, yeah, I really go on this all day. But yeah, <laughs> definitely can relate to that. It's definitely inspiration as well. Um, I want to make sure I respect your time too, because I definitely I said I have somebody to pick your brain all day. But I think this would be the perfect way to kind of close everything. Um, we talked about, of course, like giving back and how the work that we do touch somebody and make sure you know, even if it's for that one minute of them seeing a video of yours, you know, what does that do for them? How does that change their mindset? How does that change their day? Just the impact mm -hmm. that it has. So I would love to just wrap things up, saying you know. What is one bit of advice that you would give to Black creators or people of color who want to get into this space that you're in, whether that be the footwear industry, the fashion industry, the retail space, or whether it is the, um, like in other words, entrepreneurial, independent mm -hmm. side of things, freelance side, uh, what would be the one bit of advice you would give? I would spend a tremendous amount of time learning how to market yourself. It, I, I can't understate how important it is to be vigilant about your personal brand, how that personal brand shows up, the consistency of it across different platforms or how you show up in email or how you show up in person and how powerful that can be to help you attract the clients and get the business that you want and excel in your career, whether you are on the entrepreneurial track or if you're on the professional track and you want to get a job it still is important to know how to market yourself. And so, you know, and, and what I mean by that is strategically. So before you get into the world of like, oh, I need a headshot or I need to spend money for somebody to design me a resume or I need to spend spend time getting a, a website done and I need to get a, get a highlight reel done. No, I mean, strategically, uh, what is your personal brand? Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you do that's different than the other creative sitting next to you? You got to hone that information and know how to communicate it concisely. Um, that would be the advice that I just want to drive home to, to any creative that hears this. I'm not going to speak anymore because I need to write that in my own journal as we speak. Thank you, Bima, so <laughs> much for joining us for episode of Community Voices. I appreciate you. Um, and like I said, just continue continue doing the work that you do. It's, it's so important. And, and just, you know, I gave you my flowers earlier, but that work is just tremendous somebody's always watching i think everything you do speaks to that exact theory that exact concept so like i said again from me to you appreciate you a thousand percent thank you so much i, I really appreciate it thank you so much for the the great questions and thank you for the platform that that you're leading it is very important for these stories to be told for these stories to be heard uh, because we can't be what we can't see so genuinely thank you so much Oh, love it. Thank y'all, everybody, for joining into another episode of Community Voices. Until next time, take care.